using the shell method, compute the volume of the solid of revolution given by revolving the region bounded by f of x equal to x plus 1, g of x equal to 1, and h of x equal to 2 minus x, about the x-axis, and then about the line y equals 1. First, let's sketch what our region looks like. So g of x equal to 1 is the horizontal line at 1, y equals 1. f of x is just going to be intercept 1, slope 1, so it looks like that. h of x is going to be intercept 2, slope is minus 1, so it comes down. And we see that our region is this triangle right here. If I revolve around the x-axis, so we're going like this, we notice we're going to sweep out representative cylinders that can be picked out every time I choose a Y value. So every time I choose a Y, that's going to have a cylinder that goes with it. What that's going to mean is, before, when I did all the computations with the shell method in X terms, we now have to change them all to Y terms. So let's do that. So my function Y equal to X plus 1 turns into X equal to Y minus 1, Y equal to 2 minus X, turns into x equal to 2 minus y. Okay, so that's the new way of looking at our functions. Next, we're going to do an integral at some point, so we need to know the limits of integration. Now, since my cylinders are going to change with y, I'm going to have to know along what y do they vary. Well, we have one for free. We know at the bottom we're going to stop at, at 1. So I have to know how far up do I go before I get to this point here, which is like a degenerate cylinder. It's just a circle. So I set the two lines equal to each other, and we solve for y. That gives me 3 halves. So our limits are going to go from 1 to 3 halves. Let's take a look at the representative cylinder that goes with y. So for this cylinder here, we note the radius is just going to be given by the y that we chosen. So we get our radius equal to y. For the height, well, we notice that our points for the top and the bottom live in our two lines. So for the right, we're going to have x equal to 2y. And on the left, we're going to have x equal to y minus 1. So the distance from the right to the left is going to be given by 2 minus y minus y minus 1. That's going to give me a height of 3 minus 2y. Okay, always remember the height is right minus left. That's going to correspond to top minus bottom when we're in x. I can now get an area function. That's just given by putting in what we just found for r and h. So we're going to have 2 pi y, 3 minus 2 y. Okay, we can multiply the y through. Now I have a formula for volume. That's just integrate over my limits over the area function in terms of y. So we get this. This is just add 1 and flip it over to get the antiderivative, which brings me to here. And then we just need to evaluate at our two points, take their difference, and that'll give me my number. So that's done here. And then we crunch down to 7 twelfths pi. Now let's look at what happens when we revolve around the line y equal to 1. In this case, it's not going to sweep like it did before. Now it's going to be very tight. So we're going to expect that our volume is a lot smaller. All right, what changes? Well, if the limits of integration stay exactly the same, we're still going to have cylinders starting at y equals 1, going all the way up to 3 halves. The height, we're using the same functions that we used before, so the height won't change. That's going to be still 3 minus 2y. What will change is going to be the radius. So if I look at a representative cylinder, okay, my height's right there, our radius is going to be going from y equals 1 to that point, which is going to be at y. So you notice, okay, from this point here all the way down is going to be y. The part we're not going to use it now is the amount that's going to be below y equal to 1 and above y equals 0. So that's going to have distance 1. Okay, and that's going to the center of the cylinder. So what's left over is just y minus 1. So that's going to be the new radius. 
Now I have a new area function. It's going to be 2 pi rh equal to 2 pi y minus 1, 3 minus 2y. I can expand that, and then we're going to stick that into my formula for volume. So we're going to integrate from 1 to 3 halves, 2 pi against my polynomial from the area function. Again, we know how to do the antiderivative of that. Let's just add 1 and flip it over. Over here, we evaluate it 3 halves and 1. Take their difference. That's a big bit of crunching. But when you finally get to an answer, it's going to be pi over 12. This is good because it is smaller than the 7 pi 12s that we found before.